This is Sam Rivers from Muscle Kings. We're here live at the Mecham Auction, and uh, I'm standing in front of an incredible factory race car, 1968 Dodge Dart Hemi, 426 Hemi. Um, they had one of 80 made. Mickey tells me possibly 82. The first run was 50, and then it became 82 cars. Incredible opportunity uh, here at the auction to own a piece of racing history, nostalgia drag racing. Um, we're going to sit down right now with Mickey Weiss and learn about his story, how he came up, and the car itself. How you doing? I'm your host, M. Rivers, here for Muscle Kings, and I'm sitting next to the legendary Mickey Weiss, and he's... Uh, known for his famous race car, factory Hemi Dodge Dart, 68 Dodge Dart. And uh, hi, Mickey, how are you today? Good, good, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> good to see you, good to see you. Thanks for coming and um, thanks for uh, sharing your car and, and your story with us today. And uh, before we get into the car itself, why don't you just give me a little uh, background for our fans uh, of your history, how you got into cars, what made you go with the Mopar, and, uh, and, and a little bit about uh, what made you finally pull the trigger with the uh, with the factory race car? Boy, you're going to be here a while, and you're also going to get me in trouble. <laughs> I started uh, fooling with cars back when I was 14, a little hot rod, and in 1968, unfortunately, I bought a brand new Camaro at the uh, Smith Chevrolet in Trilock, California. Uh, L78, real nice car, had an M22 rock crusher in it. Unfortunately, that car came in on Thursday. Um, I destroyed the car, headers, tires, this and that. Went up to Modesto, California. Nobody wanted to race me. So <laughs> Sunday afternoon, I took it to Turlock Lake, and like an idiot, it totaled the car. So that put me in the hospital for a little while. And laying in the hospital, I thought, you know, I can make a race car out of this thing. Right. So I called a dealership in Fresno. They sent up a little black car. It had a 327 in it. Got out of the hospital. Got healed up. Put the rainy gear, everything in the car, and I thought, I want to go race. And I went up to, it was called at the time, Sacramento Raceway. And it was the big shots up there, you know, all the lightweight, factory lightweight guys up there. And the first guy I had a draw was the Melrose Missile, which you're dead in the water. And <laughs> I lucked out and got around this guy, and the people came over to me and were upset. Are you cheating? Is that a big motor? And I was like, God, what's going on with these guys? Right. And they said, well, it must be a malfunction of the lights. You're going to have to race this guy again because if you knock out this factory car, it's... And I said, okay. So I raced the guy again, and I beat him again. I thought, end of story. Came back to the pits, and it was like, in high school, I was always in trouble. Here comes the <laughs> gang. We want to know right now, is this an illegal car? Because if it is, you're out of here for a year. And I'm going... Yeah. No, it's it's legal. And a guy named Les Welch, who did a lot of photography, came up and said, I'm going to ask you something one time. Is the car legal? And I said, yeah. He took a bunch of pictures of the car. Then it came out in Superstock Magazine and started to go from there. Right. And that class at the time, you could have run a 427, 60 over, 440 inches. And basically, I had a little 396 out of the car. I just totaled 86 miles on it. Right. Put a cam on it, put headers in it, and that's... It just was a lucky combination. Got so it. then they said, that's fine. They tore me down. You're legal. I took it the next week, did a little bit more work on it, went to Fremont, and then set the national record. So I thought, well, great. I'm a big star. I'm doing really good. Right. Unfortunately, I started racing against the Hemi cars, and luckily off the line, I'd get enough head start. But suddenly at the other end, these guys would just motor by me. Right. Just they, the, they walk around you with the big the Hemi. Yeah. Thought, you know, I'm going to have to switch or just quit. So we had got, and it's called an A9. Take it, where, where are we now? 68, 60, 67? Mid-68, mid okay. May, June. So the Dart had just come in, and we had an A9 65 car, and my partner was real good at that. To me, it was a big dinosaur. I didn't feel comfortable in it. So I got in the Dart, jumped in it, and we are doing the motor work, and that little car started running pretty good. Yeah. And it seemed to go on for a year, two years, five years. Well, hell, I was 20 years old, and my God, I'm 70 now. So I thought, you know, a few years it got in match racing and competition. It got up to about 2002. And How I many passes do you think you made on the, on, the, on the dart by then? Can you even guess? Can you guess? Hundreds. Oh, gosh, yeah. No idea. Just that was my life. 
And just as far as the period goes, in 68 now, you're talking about big, big heavy cars. The Dart is a light car. We've got the, the weight, the power to weight ratio is much, much uh, more appealing. Um, factory race car, they stripped everything off. You've got fiberglass fenders, the big grabber hood. Um, I mean, they were going to the, to the, to the extent of losing the passenger seat belt. I mean, in today's standards, you you couldn't build a factory race car like that. Like you guys were iconic in that way. To the younger generation, that may sound crazy, but how 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 did you feel about just going fast in something that that came stock built from from Chrysler? I guess it's something you don't think about. It's like getting on a bicycle. That was to me the norm. That's the way you raced. You got in and you just kind of hung on, yeah. and that's what happened. Happened. So it's. So fast forward, sorry, I just had to do that because we have such a, a large demographic, younger kids, they don't really understand where you come from. I'm, I'm sort of in the middle because my dad was a race car driver like we, like we were talking about and a Chrysler guy. So, um, so, so now fast forward, it's 2002, and uh, you're still running the car, you're still doing match races. At that time, and I'd had no sponsors, it was like the little guy from the farm town in Toronto, California, and for some reason nobody wants to sponsor it, and all of a sudden gear vendors came up, a few other people came up, Chrysler came up and said, is this a real car? Yeah. I said, yes, it is. Yeah. And Glendora Dodge came on, really helped. Uh, Chrysler started sending me some parts, and actually, if you have the right parts, you can go a little faster. And then gear vendors came on board, and then getting ready to retire the car, I thought, it's time to put the car away. Uh, NHRA contacted me and said, would you like to put the car in the museum, which is right next door here. And I said, yeah, be an honor. So the car went in there, and then Mattel contacts me. Amazing. This has got to be a bunch of my buddies played a joke. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Who did this? You know, because we were always playing jokes on each other. About four or five months later, I get another letter. I said, these guys aren't making up letterhead and doing all this. This is for real. So eventually, Mattel made the Hot Wheels of the little car, which came out all over. And that was kind of the story. It was a history. It was a past. And yeah. It's been magazined a lot. The car is beautiful. It's here at the Meekum auction. You can go to Meekum.com and... Uh, We'll be watching your car, Mickey, today. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I know it's an emotional day for you, but um, we're just huge fans, and we love the we love the car. We love this story, and speaking to a li living legend here for Muscle Kings, I'm M Rivers, and um, please check out uh, Mickey's Dart 68 Hemi Factory Dodge Dart. I'm standing in front of Mickey Weiss's Hemi Dart. It's, it's about to go down, and uh, a ton of emotion. He just fired up the car coming in, and if you caught that, you know what real, real racing's all about. Just the, the sheer horsepower, the, sh the gut, visceral feeling from these cars. It's incredible. So he's going to fire it again on, when he gets to the block, and I can only imagine what's going through his head a lifetime of racing with this car, owning it and racing it since 1968. Here we are, we're right in the thick of it. Mickey just fired the car up, rolled up. Started the bit at 100K. One of only 80 cars made. 300,000 right now, and uh, I think this car needs to go higher. There's only one of 80 cars made. Let's, let's watch the action.